Hey, Ian Austin, congratulations. Your hard work has paid off, and you guys are moving into the third and final round of this supersized competition. In this final round, you're going back to your home forges for four days to build an iconic weapon from history. Bladesmiths, we want you to build this. The Japanese Great Sword. The Japanese Great Sword rose in popularity during the 14th century. Reaching lengths of up to five feet long, this massive, single-edged, slightly curved blade was designed to deliver deep, penetrating cuts upon enemy soldiers, on foot or on horseback alike. While this enormous weapon became too impractical for battle by the 17th century, it can still be seen in many action films, including the classic 1954 Kurosawa movie, Seven Samurai. Good luck, gentlemen. We will see you in four days. My name is Austin Frakes, I'm 37 years old from a little town right outside of Houston, Texas. I'm a sergeant with the local police department. Over my professional career, I've seen a lot of the ugly side of life. And a few years ago, I picked up bladesmithing after watching Forged in Fire. I like to make beautiful knives. This thing is absolutely ridiculous. It's huge, it's obscene. Almost a foot to go in length. Hoping I can get it to length quickly and get this thing quenched as quick as possible. It's right in between the two parameters. Perfect. Almost like I planned it. The heat treating process is going to be difficult due to the extreme length and the fact that I've only got an 18 inch long forge. We are skating. I know the blade is good and hard. Happy dance. All right, that's enough of that. I am putting on faux, not real, alligator skin to give this sword a little bit of my Texas heritage down here on the dirty third coast. Everything looks good so far. Now it's just time for the handle wrap. I'm just trying to make it so that it's not uncomfortable for the judge's hands. My hands are now cramping severely as I'm doing this nearly 21 inches of braid. As I finish it up, I think it looks pretty cool. It uh, just needs an edge, and then it's test time. I did grind the blade thin, and I'm hoping that the lighter weight and the thinner profile will help it cut better while still being thick enough to retain its edge during the damage test. Whoa! <laughs> My name is Ian Zierman. I'm 19 years old, and I'm from the small rural town of Bedford, Pennsylvania. Probably what got me started making blades was just my dad being a carpenter. We made a lot of wooden blades, and I looked at him and I said, wouldn't it be cool if this was metal? And he's like, let's do it. All right, so we are pretty much at length to where I want to be. I'm pretty much done, and I'm ready to get it up to temperature and quench it. So my gas forge isn't actually big enough to do the heat treating. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dig a ditch and make a, a kind of like a redneck coal forge. I have the blade in there. I'm just watching the temperature and just making sure I don't overheat it. Things are definitely heating up, literally. <laughs> it's hardened. I am really happy with how it came out. Sweet. <laughs> so next thing I need to do is I need to shape this handle and get it actually ergonomic and feeling good in your hands. Because this handle is pretty big. All right. It's starting to fit my hands really good. I really like it. It is now a fully functional sword. This thing is a beast. <laughs> so I got the Kashira put on. Uh, it's shaped. I really like it. I am ready for, um, yeah, making it look cool. I start wrapping this handle. It's going really nicely. The brown and black contrast is awesome. It's starting to look like a finished product. There we go. Very nice fit. Cool. <laughs> Placements, welcome to the dynamic keel test. That's with great disappointment that I have to say that I will not be able to wield your weapons to test it, but Dave Baker will be enjoying and doing your tests. Ian, you're up first. You ready for this? Go for it. So Ian, right off, scale-wise, perfect for my hand. The wrap is really well dialed in. 
your blade, every single one of those cuts, it was deadly. Your edge is still a razor blade. It lost no edge whatsoever. Nicely done. Thank you. All right, Austin, you ready? Yes, sir. All right, Austin, right off, your sword has a lot of height to it, and it's got a lot of mass to it, but it's really nicely balanced, which I like. An issue, there are some dull spots on your blade, dull enough that I can run my finger back and forth on it, but I really like the look of this blade. Nicely done. Thank you. Hi, Bladesmiths. Welcome to my dynamic test. They steal wind chime and fish slice. Ian, you're up first. You ready for this? Not really. Well, get ready. It's coming. All right, Ian, first things first, I, I'm impressed. This edge doesn't really show much of any indication that it had been smashed into steel wind chimes. Yeah, you can see the cuts on all these fish are nice and clean. The handle wrap is really comfortable. The dimensions are good. All in all, nice job. Thank you. All right, Austin, you're up, man. How you feeling? Let's get it over with. All right. <laughs> All right, Austin, well, you're all in one piece. Well done. Where I was hitting the wind chimes, each time I hit them, you lost more and more of your edge. There's some rolls that I can get a fingernail underneath. So as I was progressing through the fish, they became more and more difficult to cut through. But all in all, I think you did a great job. Thank you. Well, Blade Smiths, you both impressed us the entire competition, but at the end of it, only one of you can come out on top, earning the title of Fortune Fire Champion and a check for $10,000. Today's Fortune Fire Champion is... Ian. Very well done. Now, Austin, unfortunately, your blade did not make the cut, and Doug's gonna tell you why. Austin, what it came down to is the dulling you took during our test. It just underperformed on the dynamic kill and sharpness test, and those are the reasons why you didn't win today. I agree completely. Well, Austin, it's been an absolute pleasure watching you pound steel in the forge and come out with two massive blades. But unfortunately, your time in this competition has ended. I want to say thank you for coming out. But I'm going to have to ask you to please step off the forge floor. Thanks, y'all. I don't like to lose, but Ian's a great guy to lose to. That definitely makes it easier. Well, Ian, congratulations, man. That makes you a Forge of Fire champion. You'll be getting a check for $10,000. Very well done. I'm still kind of in shock, still a little shaky, but really excited. I'm really thankful. How you feeling, bud? Pretty good. <laughs> Thank, <laughs> Thank you, guys. The amount of people that I've met, be knowing what I can do in such a short amount of time, it's just I learned so much.